For folks who don't know, the Free State Project is a movement of voluntary human action where we are trying to concentrate libertarians in the state of New York. I think we've got done uh, more in the last decade than every other libertarian movement combined has accomplished in the last five decades. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, libertarians, anarchists, movers, natives, and those on your way, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Free State Live, where you get to hear all about the ways you can live free and thrive in our free state of New Hampshire. And first and foremost, though, time to welcome everyone back. As always, I'm Justin O'Donnell, former candidate for U.S. Senate here in New Hampshire and author of Live Free and Thrive, 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, and so should you. And joining me, everyone's favorite perennial candidate, author, and activist extraordinaire, Queen Quill herself, Carla Garrick. How are you, Carla? Hey, I'm great. How you doing? Uh, you know, another day, another dollar, 75 cents after taxes, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm pimping out my chest now, so a pork fest. <laughs> yeah. Get your tickets now. Uh, <laughs> Porkfest.com. We're getting yes. a sellout. Yeah, well, it's, it's what does this be, the fourth sellout in a row? Yeah, third, I think, just because 2020 obviously was a little smaller with, uh, but it happened. The only, only <laughs> friggin' libertarian event worldwide to go ahead as planned. That is how awesome we are here in the free state. Absolutely. And also joining us, you know, another regular Manchester's favorite comedian up in the clouds, the tallest man, you know, tall Bill. How are you, Bill? What's up? What's up, gangsters? <laughs> we have a gang step. sign now i saw we did the ladies oh, yeah, night and everyone that. was like yeah we did like a little porcupine it was cute i think they're gonna make fun of us for that one yeah. probably I think we're gonna make fun of that one it's all right i think it's still good we should still do it they make fun of us for everything that's kind of what they do i'm gonna make fun of us for that one. Oh. <laughs> are you gonna work that into your stand-up set somehow signing off guys <laughs> bye <laughs> Actually, it works better that way. <laughs> yeah, and people are going to think it's kind of weird. You approved but... it. <laughs> yeah, lean into it. <laughs> well, speaking of leaning into things, um, la last week we actually had a brilliant conversation with uh, the director of Freedom Fest, and we're talking about the evolution of that organization's uh, mission and their event and how they're trying to more encapsulate the arts uh, and more of messaging and reaching out to people uh, in different manners, music, film, other forms of media writing and everything aside from just the traditional academic speakers you get at liberty festivals and freedom festivals and tonight's guest uh we have somebody the executive director of the art of liberty foundation that does a whole lot of media work and uh, i mean i think i got like seven emails from them today with different uh, uh articles written uh trying to push down this media row we have etienne de la Bote squared Etienne, how are you today? I'm fantastic. It is great to be with you and your audience and all my friends in the FSP. Yeah. So why, why don't you tell everybody a little bit more about the Art of Liberty Foundation and like what it is you do and you're doing uh, with that organization to try and help push liberty here in New Hampshire and the rest of the world because you're not contained in your mission like some of us. Sure. So we're a, we're a startup public policy organization. Uh, we're voluntarist. And uh, I think the thing that makes us uh, different is that we don't believe in it. Not only do we not believe in the legitimacy, desirability, and necessity of having a government at all, uh, but we think that, the, that government is a technique used by what we call intergenerational organized crime to rob and control societies. So you can never, ever have a legitimate government. It's impossible to delegate rights that you don't have yourself to a representative to represent you doing something you don't have to, you know, do yourself. You don't have the ability to do yourself. If my uh, girlfriend and myself can't vote to rob somebody because there's two of us and one of them, it doesn't matter if there's three or 10 or, you know, 230 million others. Uh, you can't be bound by a social contract that you didn't sign. So government is illegitimate. And I think that it's always been illegitimate. It's been just kind of a trick uh, to, you know, to rob and control societies. 
And whether or not you believe in the legitimacy of government, uh, I think that most people would, you know, or, or as far as I've found, most people will generally agree that even if they think there should be a government, the government that we have now has been, you know, is has been hijacked and is being run by organized crime for the benefit of a few at the expense of the many. And so we've got a, you know, an organized crime problem in D.C. where trillions of dollars are being handed to private companies through the TARP, the TALF, the bailouts, the stimulus, uh, billions and billions of dollars for weapon systems we don't need to fight uh, wars based on lies and manufactured intelligence with uh, enemies that have been in invented so we can be robbed. And so, uh, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to expose that. Uh, in doing that, we publish books, and monographs, uh, articles, uh, and uh, and a flash drive of freedom that we call the Liberator. That back. Did we lose him? Did we free? Did we lose you at the end? I believe so. Ooh, I guess uh, NSA didn't like what he had to yeah. say. <laughs> ah, he's back. There you are. There All you right, go. you're back. <laughs> what was so shocking that they had to censor you? <laughs> so you were on the Liberator. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we, we back up all of the evidence of government's illegitimacy and criminality on a little uh, credit card size flash drive that we call the Liberator. And this is everything that's disappearing off of the internet and being uh, de-platformed or de-indexed by the search engines or uh, deleted off of YouTube. We're trying to make sure it doesn't go anywhere uh, by creating an archive that can fit in everybody's uh, wallet. That's pretty now, cool. I, that is that similar to like the download Wikipedia project? I, I mean, I know there's a lot of people who uh, talk about how you should have an external hard drive that just has a local copy of Wikipedia on it because of all the information that's out there. Um, but yours is more specifically the stuff they won't let you put on Wikipedia. Uh, correct. Well, ours is documentaries, short videos, uh, document important books in PDF. Uh, truth music, uh, dank liberty memes. It's a little bit of everything. I'd say half of it is evidence of government illegit and illegitimacy and criminality. And then uh, half of it is uh, voluntarism. So how the free market could deliver everything that the government does except redistribution without the violence and the extortion and the missing malinvestment and all the problems that come with having uh, an organized crime government. Yeah. You know, Etienne, I think I met you the first time at a Liberty forum and you had your book. I think it was before it was published. It might've been the draft version. And I just mm -hmm. remember being so taken by it because I'm a very visual person. Can you talk a little bit about that book and sort of how you went about it? If I remember correctly, it was sort of targeted to high school kids. Uh, well, it's 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 targeted to, to everyone, but it's very visually rich because most people are visual learners and they come to insight much quicker if you show them uh, an image or a visualization or a historical photo. And so the book is really designed to wake people up to the scam of government. And so, you know, starting off, it's a, it's kind of a picture book. It's image rich. Uh, and so, you know, right off the bat, you know, more than, you know, 50% of people will engage with the book where if it was just a text only book, that might be 10 to 15% if they were interested in the subject matter. But the book is so visually compelling that once people pick it up, they're kind of like, what is going on here? And they, you know, they start flipping through the images and they kind of get hooked and, you know, I'll be exhibiting somewhere and I literally almost every time somebody will, you know, begin reading the book at my, at my table and I'll have, they'll sit down, you know, right, sometimes right next to the table. Sometimes they'll take a book and, and walk over and I'll, I'll just have somebody just, you know, start like reading the whole thing. It's that kind of, you know, uh, that, that kind of interesting. And so the book is really designed and this, this gets into, you know, kind of what, what our goal is with New Hampshire, the, the, the book is designed to be dropped off at somebody's house and then they pick it up and they're like, oh my God, what's going on here? And they just get, uh, they get, 
you know, uh, sucked in and all of a sudden they're now figuring out that government has been a scam and how the scam works and who's behind the scam. And then uh, the flash drive backs up everything in the book with all of the evidence and then, you know, if, if people want to dive deeper, you know, uh, into, you know, anything from 9-11 to the COVID, you know, you can go into that particular folder and you can get the best evidence that we've been able to curate for the scam of 9-11, the scam of the COVID, whatever the, you know, uh, uh, the scam of the day is. And then really, it's like I said, it's the it's a complete introduction into voluntarism, the free market how the market can deliver everything the government does better, faster, cheaper without the violence and the victimless crimes and the, you know, malinvestment of traditional government. Now, I, I mean, you talk about voluntarism and like the illegitimacy of government entirely. I know me and you had a really interesting conversation earlier in the week about the mm -hmm. use of the term anarchy and how a yep. lot of us describe ourselves as anarchists and how you've taken a completely different approach. You don't use the word uh, because of the negative connotations uh, that, you know, your uneducated populace is assigned to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, is there value you think in maybe com trying to combat those negative connotations or do you just find more success in converting people to realizing they are anarchists through the use of other terms like voluntarism and agorism and stuff like that? So, you know, one of the things that I break down in the book is in uh, government, the biggest scam in history exposed is how the word anarchy has been twisted. It, it just means no rulers it doesn't mean no rules. Right. But because the rulers don't want you to know that there's an option on the menu called no rulers, no rulers. <laughs> they've, used, they've used control of the dictionary, control of the media to change the word for no rulers to mean chaos and dystopia. And so uh, what I found is uh, if you use the term voluntarism, and by the way, voluntarism just means that all relations between people must be voluntary. Nobody gets the ring of power. Nobody gets rights that other people don't, don't have. Everybody has the exact same rights. Well, that precludes you from having a government. Uh, and there's also, you know, you, there's also kind of an implied understanding of the free market, of the invisible hand, of how the world is a self-organizing system. It produces spontaneous order and everything that government does would be done better, faster, cheaper by the market. Well, if you say voluntarism, uh, number one, you don't have all of the baggage that is, that is associated with the word anarchy. Number one. And then number two, people are like, oh, what's that? And it gives you kind of like a blank slate to explain to them the beautiful ideas of liberty without the baggage, uh, you know, the unfortunate baggage that anarchy has picked up among, you know, people that, that you know, aren't students of political philosophy. Do you find well, that most people have or haven't heard of voluntarism? Most people have not heard of voluntarism. I, like yeah, I'm even, I I'm surprised this now in our group, in our circles, uh, you know, I'd say the majority of people have, but like to the average person on the street, uh, number one, they've not heard of voluntarism and anarchy is, uh, people in black masks setting stuff on fire during right. the G8 or the G20. So, or a great song in the UK. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I, I mean, have you seen success though? I mean, cause you and I take completely different opinions on that. And I respect your opinion, where you come from with it entirely. And I think the difference is we try and reach different audiences with our media. Whereas yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm much more focused inward to the people who are already libertarian to discuss the ethics and implications of it. And you're reaching out to people who are on the cusp of learning about it. Um, and, and to me, it's important that we defend the righteousness uh, of our labels because language is incredibly important. And yeah. when people talk about anarchy as this violent uh a bat a bad batman movie is what they think of when they think the of anarchy. Um, yeah. i i want to see a world where when people think of anarchy they think of um the christian cards they think of the free christiana they think of slab city and all these places around the world where people are living without government peacefully harmoniously uh and with peaceful relations with their neighboring governments Right, right. And I, I, I want to see that too, but I think yeah. it's, it's just a, it's a harder road to hoe 
using the word anarchy than using the word volunteerism. And so I don't think you're going to, I don't think you're going to get a lot of people, like it's, it's going to be tougher to get people to self-identify as an anarchist than it is going to be to get people to uh, associate, to self-identify as a volunteerist. And I think you're already seeing that because there's a lot of people I like, it's not just me, you know, there's a lot of people that are, that are, you know, kind of adopting it. So I look at it as a little bit like, like the rebrand, but I don't, you know, I'm, I mean, like I, there's still people that use the word classical liberal, even though the word liberal was hijacked in the exact same way because organized crime didn't want people to understand that there was an option on the menu called free or, you know, uh, libertarian. And so, you know, they hijacked the world, the word uh, uh, liberal, they turned it into to mean left, they popularized it to mean leftist instead of free or libertarian. And there's still people to this day that call themselves classical liberals. And so, uh, so I don't think that anarchy is going to die the same way. I don't think that classical liberal has, uh, is going to die, but like, I just think it's, I just, I myself think it's easier, uh, to get people on board with the term voluntarism than the word anarchy, even though they mean the exact same thing. <laughs> well, at the end of the day, you're right, but I think Robert Daniel here in our chat actually makes a great point. We just need to stop using labels altogether, uh, precisely mm -hmm. because of the sustained attack on language and definitions by postmodernists. Labels are a trap, yeah. uh, and I agree with that entirely. At the end of the day, like labels are a trap to like pigeonhole people into something that can be used against them. But where we are, we're fighting for our freedom and our liberty against government forces, and um, we actually we just saw. In the uh, NBC documentary about the free state, uh, they got, had a short clip of an interview with Governor Chris Sununu, uh, who was one of the better governors in the state, even though we do like to complain about him to hold him to be accountable to a better uh, than he is. He's awful. Yeah. Personally, yeah. I can't stand the guy. He needs to be better. One of the best in the country, and he needs to be better. Um, but in that clip, he was talking about the diverse political climate here in New Hampshire. And he mm -hmm. said, we we run the gamut. Everything from your democratic socialists and communists to your free state or anarchists. Um, we're even some of the more libertarian. And, and he identified himself as a small L libertarian. Uh, I don't think you can have that. Likes to <laughs> label others as an as anarchists. So I, Look, I think anyone who wants to claim the label, we should be embracing. I totally. mean, you know, let's not get in our own way here for totally, crying totally. out loud. I mm. think how we win, at least in New Hampshire, with the Free State Project, which is a little smaller in scope, I think, than what Etienne's trying to do. But you know, if we just say Free Stater, literally means an individual like go ask him like i was laughing because granite state progress kind of thinks they have this i gotcha where they're like know your candidates and i'm like if you know your candidates we actually stand a pretty good chance like if you're not right. just listening to the song and dance if you actually talk 100%. to someone who's mindfully aware of what's happening and can explain to you oh, your, your school costs double what the private school costs and the kids can't read or write. Are you cool with that? I'm not, right? So we can win. So if we just say free stater is an individual, I think we, we, we reduce the label to the literal philosophy, right? The answer is in the answer. Mm -hmm. Well, at the end of the day, that requires education. That requires teaching people that there can be individuals. Because right now, we, we, we've got thousands of years of human beings being conditioned into a collectivist mindset and never knowing anything other than a government their entire lives for generations at a time and never knowing anything other than the opposition. And that's why I think like work like what Etienne's doing and what the Free State Project is doing, trying to educate people into these other options to know that there is another option in the first place is so critically important to the move forward. But it's, it's not just educating because what I'm trying to do is expose right. and what, you know, I think the, you know, the different, I think, you know, one of the, the things that makes us a little bit, bit different is that we want to go on the offensive and we want to win the whole thing. And one of the reasons I'm so excited about the free state project uh, and have been for, you know, for quite some time is that I think that we have the real ability to, to take over a state and free it 
from the scam of government by widely exposing the illegitimacy of it and the fact that the government is running game on people. And so that's really, I think the difference in my work is that if you, you know, if you read my book, you understand that, Hey, there's a playbook of how do you slave up a country? It's the exact same playbook, the Nazis, the Soviets, the East Germans used. It's being run on the people of the United States. The techniques that they're using are unethically manipulative. Okay. Which is one of the reasons, you know, that government is illegitimate is because they have to use these unethically manipulative techniques on children, force them to go to a, you know, government school where a government teacher reading out of a government textbook is going to teach them that government is legitimate, desirable, and necessary before they're old enough to really evaluate the logic and the morality of that claim. Uh, government is is uh, is is um, creating media that reinforces this. There's a monopoly media system that is controlling the information that people receive. They're product placing the flag into movies and television shows. They're using techniques like anchoring. They're putting the flag on the backboards of NBA games. So you psychologically associate the goal with the flag. And like, you know, once people realize, oh, you know, they're making the presidents appear to be holy using trick photography and so that they're always got halos around their heads. Exactly. And so that's like, just what, good lighting. That's just but, good lighting. I mean, so like, just record, look good with my that. aura is entirely natural. So, so once you realize that the government and the media are working together and that it's a trick, well, that's a one way revolution that's only going in one direction. And so, you know, so, uh, you know, I've, I've had people that have taken down their flags. I've had people that were going to go into the military and they said, hey, wait a minute, I'm not going into like I, I get it. It's a scam and I've like not gone into the military. Uh, you know, um, I've gotten people to move to, to New Hampshire from as far away as Paris, France. Uh, you know, and so the, so the book is very, very successful and, and kind of like, you know, what it does and waking people up. And so what we'd like to do is we'd like to go kind of on the offensive in New Hampshire in the sense that we're, you know, uh, exposing the scam of government widely. And I think that that really is, uh, you know, a potential strategy that should be, you know, kind of debated and evaluated is what happens if we dropped 100,000 copies of a book exposing the illegitimacy, the criminality of government in a way that, number one, couldn't be ignored, and in a way that would get people into that kind of hundredth monkey effect. And for those that don't know what the hundredth monkey is, uh, it's a term in psychology that's come to mean where, where a group of people kind of come to the same idea all at the same time because everybody's talking about it. Everybody's trying to figure it out. And I think that, uh, that that is one way, uh, that we could do it. We call that the pre-state project. And, uh, and in essence, uh, my foundation is trying to raise uh, a couple of mil- couple of million dollars to drop, uh, a hundred thousand copies of the book, the flash drive, a to be determined documentary, in a, you know, door to door, not in a, in a kind of very targeted way, targeting the, the influential, uh, the, the, because you don't have to win everybody. You just have to win the entrepreneurs, the business executives, the, the professoriate, the intelligentsia, the bloggers, the vloggers, the journalists, like there's a, there's a core group that you can, uh, that you can target that would have a NBC you know, Boston, NBC, oh. Bo- like, like, like th- those are the, Boston. Those those people that have the ability to influence others, once you win them, they tend to pull the rest of society along with them. And so uh, so we want to drop 100,000 copies of the book and we want to do it in a way that drives people to a dozen town hall meetings in a dozen uh, cities around the state so that we can uh, have a kind of like Liberty Forum light where there's an expo and we introduce uh, the libertarian leaning to all the libertarian organizations in the state. Uh, We get them off of, we get them on the, on a, on a trusted encrypted uh, messaging platform so we can continue to communicate with them. 
but we want to widely expose the illegitimacy of, of government in a way that we think will lead to this, uh, this hundredth monkey effect where people are like, oh my God, it's been a scam. We don't the owe them time. any money. Always we don't works. owe them any money. Bring the, you got to bring the astronaut meme to real life. It always was the whole time. <laughs> yeah. I love that uh, that you've got this this big strategy and you're like, you're putting the work into it. I see a lot of people with a lot of ideas, you know, but they don't have like a thing to deliver. Or the, they just want to debate how to put it into place. I love that you're going for it, man. That's pretty cool. 100,000 books distributed throughout New Hampshire. That's awesome. Yeah. And so we started, it's, it's funny. We started on the, you know, so we, we also started on the, on the, on the low side in the, on the last Liberty forum. And so in addition to selling dozens and dozens of books and dozens and dozens of liberators, uh, we began giving them away to New Hampshire influential. We began to uh, give them away to elected legislators in the state, uh, police chiefs and libraries and so now, you know, we've donated copies in Petersboro, Ware, uh, Manchester, uh, and others. Uh, we've got it into the intra intra library loan program, where you nice. can get it at every single library in the state. Excellent. And we've started uh, we've started on our website uh, an option where people can donate uh, books, uh, th where we will either, we will, we were either send them to the libertarian leaning in the legislature and in the media bloggers, bloggers, et cetera, or in a, you know, we'll, uh, we'll donate them to the misguided among our, uh, our opponents. So Xander Hawkins from Grant state progress has gotten a copy and uh, Brody Deshays has been sent a copy, and so we're, you know, we're we're trying to to you know explain to, you know, the people that are opposing what we're doing. Hey, you've got it wrong. We're trying to help you. We're trying to, you know, unlock your mind. Uh, somebody's been running game on you. They ran some unethically manipulative techniques, but there may be, you know, uh, you know, a reason why you're so. Uh, you know, so uh, enthralled with the idea of being an American uh, instead of just being a, a human being that lives on this planet that doesn't owe your income or allegiance to some, you know, organized crime system running unethically manipulative, uh, you know, behavioral psychology on you. <laughs> but how yeah. would, who would build the roads? You, you talk about <laughs> uh, trying to reach out to the people who are almost there, the people who are ardently opposed. What about the people who are drifting away? Like, how do we keep them? How do we, the people who at least understood it, who got it and have started to drift away through some influence or another. And I, I think of this because you brought up Brody Deshaies and mm -hmm. he's somebody who's become like an ardent opponent of a lot of libertarian ideas in the state house and, uh, talks and like openly talks against the free state project in documentaries. Yet when I look back at my old campaign list from when I ran for office in 2018, he was one of my volunteers and somebody who'd signed up. He was mm -hmm. somebody who had helped with the Gary Johnson campaign in 2016. Like, how do we get someone like that back? Well, you know, it, so it'd be interesting. We could call him up and see what he thought of the book. But like, you know, one of the things that, you know, like I'm doing or that I'm doing differently is exposing the way the magician does the trick yeah. because nobody likes to get tricked. And so once you realize that government not is not not is not just is illegitimate and you know doesn't deliver the goods and doesn't you know operate as promised, but when you realize that it's a scam and they've and and the government's been and the media have been running these unethically manipulative techniques on you, well, nobody likes to get chumped. I mean, absolutely nobody likes to get chumped. And so, like, you know, once you get it. And like, like it's, it's hard to get back behind it when you know how the magician does the trick, you know, so that, that create, unlike, you know, uh, left, right politics, you know, voting, uh, you know, uh, you know, voting for this one this time. And next time we're going to, I'm going to vote for the Democrat. Once you realize that government in itself is illegitimate and has been a scam and has been a trick to get you to go along with something that's not in your interest. Well, that's a one-way revolution that only goes in one direction. Nobody goes back 
to believing in government once they realize they've been tricked and they understand how the magician does the trick and they're like, oh my God, it was so so what do you say to the old saying? Um it's easier to con someone than it is to convince them that they've been conned. I agree with that. that I, I agree with that completely, but You're it's fighting some, an uphill battle on some uh, level. Well, I, well, well, so so I agree with that completely. But the other thing is, is that, you know, um, a lot of people will, you know, throw in the towel when they realize that the, their position is 100 percent, you know, uh, uh, und- indefensible. And so you don't you're never going to win everybody. Of course, but you of don't course. have to win. That's the other thing. You right. know, I, I used to work at one of the big four think tanks in D.C. in my youth. And the, and the number one thing that I learned is that you don't have to win everybody. Like you only have to win this 10 to 15 percent of the population. That is the intelligentsia. That is the the you know, the the entrepreneurs, the business executives, the professoriate, the bloggers, the vloggers, the people that are in a in a, a position to influence others, and then they pull the rest of society. And so I think we could do that in a very surgical, targeted way. Uh, where, you know, when everybody on their block is talking about this book or this, you know, this campaign that's going on in the state, you know, we could get people talking about politics in a way that they have never, ever, ever talked about politics before. And I think that that's easy to do. And it's, it's, you know, like I said, I think it's a couple of million bucks. And what I've been trying to, you know, uh, explain to you know, our, uh, you know, our followers at, in the Art of Liberty Foundation is if you want to, if you want to free uh, the United States, free New Hampshire first. If you want to free Israel, free New Hampshire first. If you want to free China, free New Hampshire first. We have to prove the case that liberty works. And so the, the I think that New Hampshire could be the whole planet's laboratory of liberty. I think New Hampshire could be the whole planet's proof of concept that, deli- that that freedom delivers the goods and produces a better, higher quality standard of living than anything else. And that's the opportunity I see with the Free State Project. Well, I think amen. That is there, a good yeah. note to end that's on. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, I think what you just described there is um, what the socialists call the long march to the institution. It's one of the most effective socialist tools they've ever used to capture the world, like working through academia and mm-hmm. bureaucracy. Well, but see, the game has changed a little bit because of technology and the decentralization of the message. They do not control all channels into people's minds anymore. And that is part of the opportunity. And that is where graphics and visuals and memes and all of that starts to come in. And that is a huge opportunity for us. Absolutely. Etienne, where can everybody follow up with you, learn more about what you're doing and support your work? Uh, Government-scam.com artofliberty.org or artofliberty.substack.com are the main places to find us. Uh, and it, the, if you wanted to donate any copies to the pre-state project, uh, you can do that at government hyphen scam, uh, forward slash store. Uh, and, um, those are all my links. Awesome. Well, everybody, you mentioned, give them a visit, check it out. It's great work. I got a copy of the book on the, uh, coffee table over at the quill uh, it's been there for a couple of years now uh, it's a really interesting read great coffee table book just to leave around if you have guests coming too um, always a good conversation starter uh, and if you want to learn more about the free state project head over to fsp.org always learn more about what we're doing how you can get involved and if you want to come visit new hampshire before you make your move you can get in touch with a great team over there that can help you plan your move visit plan your move get connected with your local community as well and while you're visiting or if you're already here and just trying to get in touch with people check out fsb.org slash calendar it's our most jam-packed calendar of events in the world uh you'll you, we joke every week you can try and do them all and you'll fail. I missed MVP for the first time in like three years this past weekend because I just overslept. I was so burned out. Uh, there's just too much to do, but it's always a great time to try. And if you want to support the mission of the Free State Project and everything that we do, you can go to fsp.org slash give. And remember, it's a 501c3 charitable nonprofit, which means your donations are tax deductible and Uncle Sam doesn't get to spend them. 
Uh, and Kevin is not here, so we do have to give out a shout out for his pitch. Join the Discord. You can go chat with Kevin and the other guys over on Discord.gg slash FSP every day, all day. Ask your questions, get them answered, get connected with people who are doing the things here in New Hampshire. And Bill, Carla, anything else? No, Come visit. Your pork fest pork fest. Yes. Pork fest. Get your pork fest tickets. Porkfest.com. Uh, Carla will pitch it all day, every day. All day. And <laughs> it's going to be another great year. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, well, Etienne, thank you so much for coming on tonight. We really do appreciate it. Um, anything you want to leave people with? No, uh, I want to thank everybody here for doing all that you guys do. This is this is how we win. Everybody doing their own like little thing. So uh, it's good to be uh, uh, rowing the boat with you guys. Awesome. Hey, well, awesome. until next time, everybody, stay free. Peace out. Yeah. I don't believe in destiny I just do what's best for me Don't listen to my enemies They're just full of jealousy yeah. This legacy You gon' see what's left of me You gon' see success in me You ain't seen the rest I of me I just wanna be the best at what I know Better than the rest, just watch me grow Put me to the test and watch me go This is my quest, I'ma make it known They call me obsessive, oh I know Call me selective with my notes Call me aggressive with my flow Call me offensive even though Joey ain't gonna 